What's up everybody? I'm Michael Chris, three years running bestseller at Shine On. Now I'm the CMO of Shine On. I wanted to thank you so much for checking out our YouTube video. And if you like this kind of content, I want you to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you enjoy the video. What's up? How you doing, man? Oh, you're muted. Okay, how about that? Yep, there you go. Hey everybody. Doing? doing great, doing great. I do I do that literally every stream and nobody's teed up for it. Uh with the mute? Yeah. I, I imagine that um I knock a bunch of, of people out of their chairs every time we kick one of these off. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> um anyway, how you doing, buddy? Doing great, man. Uh enjoying this ride, but you know, looking forward to the cutoff date and uh get a little more free time. But uh, you know, it's all good. So it's great yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's thrilling but exhausting at yeah. the same time. Sure. Every every ecom guy that catches something that scales will tell you that. Yep. Yeah, it gets nuts. Am I uh look like I froze for a minute? Am I still here? Um, I'm looking at Streamyard, not Facebook, so I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. What's up, everybody? In Facebook land, thanks for joining us. We got David Mackey. What's up, Mauricio? How you doing, buddy? Getting them ice chickens in there. Dig it. Facebook user whoop whoop. Hey, uh, if you're watching, go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and make sure you give StreamYard permission to, uh, or Facebook, one of, one of them needs permission to show us your name. So StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook to take care of that. Cynthia says, hi, Mario. Cynthia. You know Cynthia? She a student? Yeah, yeah. She's in my group. Yeah, she's great. Awesome. She's a hard worker. She's one product away. That's, that's what it takes. Yep. Paul, what's up? Michael, good morning. Shiny peeps. How's everybody doing today? We're, whoops, that's not the screen. We're going to be talking about scaling with Mario. So Mario's here. He's going to share some tips and tricks and kind of what's you, working for him and his students right now. Looking forward to that. And Mario is a big Tim Bird guy. So uh, Tim Bird's got a very unique, I don't even know what you'd how you'd describe it. It's a very unique, almost hacky kind of approach to uh, scaling Facebook ads. And when I say hacky there, I'm, I don't mean to devalue it in any kind of way. I'm saying he's looking for places in the system he can exploit mm -hmm. um, for, for gain, right? And it's, it's some of the stuff he comes out with is super unique. So anyways, Mario's a big Tim Bird fan. I know that's uh, uh, been a big influence for him and you see in a lot of his scaling methods. So I think we're gonna learn a lot today. But before we begin, you guys know how we like to kick things off around here. We have to start with the little digital marketers toast. So everybody ready? You ready out here in chat land? Raise up your glasses, mugs, bottles, and flasks, and join me now for the Digital Marketers Toast. Here's to more conversions, more cash, cheap CPMs, and lower CACs to higher CTRs, much higher CVRs to enable ad accounts and big bank accounts, up sells, down sells, and cross sells, to winning products and repeat sales, and to the thing that everybody knows, the riches are in the niches, but also your email flows. Are you ready? Drink. So Cheers. There we go. I almost have this thing memorized. I still have to pull it up every single time, but is what it is. All right, guys, let's get to it. So do me a favor. If we provided value to you at all throughout this year, if you've enjoyed even one coffee with Michael, if we've made you laugh, if you think we've, um, you know, done something great for the universe here, uh, I want you to like this post, heart the post, whatever the post will allow you to do. Uh, show it some love right now. If you're on YouTube, um, I think they removed the dislike button. So you got to hit that like button for us. Um, my heart's going to be broken if this post doesn't have like 10 trillion likes. So give it some love if you could, please. And then finally, I want you to comment. Let's kick this sucker off. Tell us where you're watching. We launched in Amsterdam. That was a big thing we worked on all year long. We've got the factory up. We've got a live stream up, by the way, for the Amsterdam facility now. If you haven't seen that, Eric Taz posted it in the group. It was either yesterday or today. I can't remember. I think it was yesterday. Go find that. Uh, and you can actually see our Amsterdam facility in action. You can see all of our employees, our setup, things like that. It's really cool. You can watch them live. You can also watch the U.S. factory live. And uh, inside of the platform itself, there are links to the live streams in the top left. So you want to go check that out. But tell us where you're watching this. We launched Amsterdam. We want to see our European uh, uh, friends and family over there. 
chiming in here. So I got a whole bunch of folks coming in. Facebook user says Mario shaved yeah. his head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it helped, it helped us scale. You know, uh, Kirsto Kirk, was doing Kirsto was doing it. So you know. Ah, he or she <laughs> noticed anyway. So is that the thing this year? You got to shave your head. Honestly, uh, the little bit of free time I've had in Q4, I didn't want to spend it getting a haircut, so I just it's, left it. It's it's the shaved head method, guys. Shine on brought it to you first, right here on the Coffee with Michael. Yeah. All right, Jeff says, "What's up? Looking forward to this." Facebook user, good morning. This Facebook user asks if Red Bull's okay. Anything is okay as long as it fits in a um, glass mug, bottle, or flask. So use your imagination. All right. Uh, hey there, the daydreaming unicorn. Mm -hmm. I think one unicorn is born every time we do a coffee with Michael. I'm telling you, it's like a net gain for the entire universe. Nice. All right. They're from Texas. Mm -hmm. We got someone coming in from Montreal. Matt from London. What's up, Matt? Hey, Matt. I dig seeing Matt here. Matt's a, a OG. Nice. He's been around for a while. So welcome, Matt. Thanks for uh, joining us, buddy. Good morning from the great country of Texas. Is like a different country. Dave Mackey from St. Louis was up. Hey, Dave. Paul from Boston. Hey, Paul. How you doing? Michael from Arizona. Ooh, Eric dropped the uh, live stream to the Amsterdam uh, facility in the link. So if you're interested and you want to check that out, in another tab, do not click out of this, by the way. In another tab, you can go do it. So right click, open a new tab, and you can go check that out. But then I expect your full attention. <laughs> All right. We got Richard from uh, Fort Lauderdale. Justin, Justin from Jakarta. What's up, buddy? Twin Cities. Where are all our international peoples? Hot Atlanta. Bangladesh. Digging Bangladesh. Kenya. What's up? Spain. How you doing, buddy? We've got four or five folks internationally here. Where else do we have? Eric says all the best media buyers shave their heads. That's what we're saying here. Um, you know, I've got like probably 15 years worth of commitment right here. But hey, if it makes us more money, I'll say bye bye to it. I'll probably have to start working out, though, because a tall, skinny guy is kind of creepy. <laughs> Definitely need to get a little build on me. On me. All right. Alberta, Canada. What's up? Okay. Just the international folks now. Finland. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Cool. Uh, Antarctica, you wish, buddy, but we might be sending you sometime soon. Uh, Matt says Minnesota. Germany, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Denmark, boom. All right, we'll finish on a high note. Denmark and Germany, Europe. Uh, we have um, Matt here. So thank you so much for joining. Appreciate all of you. Let's get into it. We're going to do some testimonials, some quick updates, and we're going to get right into the meat. All right, testimonials. So Matt here, he was on Coffee with Michael for last week. Go check it out if you haven't. Uh, Matt has been, um, he's been grinding away at this thing for a while. He deserves every bit of success that he's been able to attain uh, this year. And it's, it's super happy to see, uh, it's super awesome to see him succeed. And Mario, I know that he's taking coaching from you. He's worked with Kirsta. He took my course. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy has absorbed knowledge. He's learned from everybody and he's implemented everything he's picked up. So uh, I don't know. I'm just super stoked to see him succeeding. Anyway, he dropped this post in the chat uh, or in the Facebook group earlier this week. He said, uh, I'll take swords for 5k here. He built a little meme out of it. He did 5,500 units sold in the last 30 days. So he's just absolutely crushing it. $173,000 in profit. Kudos, man. You deserve every ounce of success. Let's give Sam some applause in the chat if you could. Get those little hand emojis going on for Matt Bay here. He deserves Matt Ba. It's Ba, actually. I'm mispronouncing his name. He deserves literally uh, uh, all of the credit for this. Um, so anyway, Matt, I know you're watching. Kudos, buddy. And by the way, he watches every single coffee with Michael. Every single one of them. I see him in here. He's in the chat. He's he's participating. Oh, he's, oh, he's making jokes. Kid's got he's got jokes. Yeah, well, he does have jokes. So you know, who knows what really tipped him over the edge? Was it Mario? Was it Cursa? It very well could have been this show. Very well could have. You never know. So anyway, congratulations, buddy. Um, someone on my team will reach out. You got some swag coming your way. And by the way, we got some new swag too. So I think you're gonna like it. We have this really cool kind of tie-dye hoodie that you're gonna want to check out. It's pretty neat. All right, Gary here. 
Gary, from September 4th, it took me 54 days to hit $1,000 in revenue, 22 days to hit 2,000, 12 days to hit 3,000, four days to hit 4,000. So this, this shows you how like things scale exponentially, uh, the deeper you get into uh, the gifting seasons, but it also shows you the power of like uh, your pixel warming up, right? It also shows you like the more you learn about your audience, uh, you're better able to optimize your own ads, even if you're doing it manually, right? So it just goes to show there's a little bit of a learning curve here, but success gets faster and faster and faster the longer you play the game. So congratulations, Gary. Uh, love to see that. Best part is I didn't find some secret or no, or miracle method. I just tested design after design after design, used the farming method to make it pay. Oh, and the design, it's black text on a white background with absolutely no graphics. It's the phrase that pays. And this is something that Mario, myself, Kirsta, anybody that's had success in this game will tell you. Um, he is 100% spot on. So anyway, congratulations, buddy. I hope, I know we've got a week left of selling here with Shine On. I hope you absolutely crush it. So great work, bud. You've got some swag coming your way. Ola, $659 in revenue, sold 10 units. Just wanted to share with everyone, I hit my 2K milestone. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong screen share, uh, screenshot here. So uh, he had another one at 1.4K. He's, he's gone on since then to hit 2K in revenue. Um, he shared some screenshots. Took me some time to hit 1K, uh, but from there it got a little bit easier and I'm still learning a lot. So congratulations. Thanks so much for sharing your success. Really appreciate you, buddy. You deserve it. Lisa, 10, 10K club. Uh, hello, it's nice to be here. I won't stay here long. So Lisa, another long time watcher of Coffee with Michael. Um, uh, I know that I'm pretty sure she's in Anna's group. Mario, I don't know if you've had any influence here, but I think so. still though, one of the things you're going to notice about anybody, well, a lot of the people that are successful here is they're learning from everybody. They're learning a golden nugget here and a golden nugget here. And maybe they like Matt Schmitz or Mario's style on a certain thing. And then maybe they like me or Kirsta's style on another thing. And they're just kind of eating the meat and throwing out the bones everywhere they go. And eventually, they, they, they build their own unique skill stack that brings them success. I've seen Lisa here uh, climbing up through the ranks, posting these revenue screenshots over time. It's not the first time Lisa will have received swag from us. So anyway, congratulations, Lisa. Thanks so much for sharing. If you want to get free swag, we do it every week. We grab two to five posts from the group, share a testimonial with screenshot of your uh, sales, share some value posts, right? Tips, tricks, education, what's working for you, what isn't working for you, things like that. We love to see it all. We will feature you here. And if you're featured, you'll get some swag. All right, let's get into some quick updates. Shipping deadlines. So we've got the shipping deadlines. They've been posted. If you want to get to the shipping deadlines, go to the Facebook group, go to the featured tab, scroll down, and you're going to see the post in there. You can also probably search in the group for deadlines. Uh, and then obviously I've got it here. So you can always pause the stream. Well, don't pause the stream because it's more magical when it's live, but go back later and then pause the screen and you can uh, see the shipping cutoffs. I'll very, very quickly run through these. So for graphic pendants, uh, so those are your dog tags, your hearts, things like that. Uh, EU and UK, the last day for selling is Friday, December 10th. That's today. You need to get the order in by 11.59 PM CET. CET is Amsterdam time. 11.59 p.m. CET for international sales. Uh, I'm sorry, for EU and the UK, uh, for Amsterdam. The U.S., we're going to Sunday, December 12th. So that's this coming Sunday, 11.59 p.m. EST. So Eastern time, right? That's where our factory is in Florida. The engraved only product. So that's like the stick necklace, the cross. Cutoff dates in the EU in the UK, Sunday, December 12th, 11.59 CET, PM CET, it's Amsterdam time. In the US, it's Tuesday, December 14th. So next Tuesday, 11.59 PM EST. And then message cards. You've got, e these have the longest uh, runway here for selling. EU and UK, Wednesday, December 15th, 11.59 PM CET. And then in the US, Thursday, December 16th, at 11.59 PM CET. EST. So I'm going to let everybody in on a little secret here. Uh, we are trying to see if we can get some extra days of selling, right? Um, and we will make an announcement if we can do it, if we can manage it, we're going to make an announcement in the group next week, early next week on whether or not extra days of selling are possible. So you're going to want to pay attention in the group. You're not going to want to miss it. If you've, especially if you got something scaling, you know, those extra days of selling make can make a 
huge difference. I mean, it's money every single day. So pay attention to the Facebook group because we're going to announce it early next week if we can pull it off. We're working our fingers to the bones uh, for you folks to make you as successful as possible. So anyway, there are shipping deadlines. All right, Affiliate Dashboard 2.0, this launch uh, last week. So um, if you have at least 100 sales now in the platform of the app, you suddenly have access to our affiliate program automatically. All you got to do is log into the platform of the app, go over to analytics on the left and click referrals. Inside there is your kind of affiliate dashboard. Up in the very top right, you're going to see a magic link. That's your affiliate link. You can share that with friends, family, strangers. Uh, I don't care where you share it. Share it with everybody. Put it in um, other Facebook groups. Put it in forums. Put them wherever you hang out with other e-commerce people. If they sign up to Shine On through your link, you will get 75 cents per order that they put through with us. 75 cents per order. So it's a great uh, program, especially if you bring over some sharks and some whales. Um, we we literally have folks in this program that have done six figures. So um, you're going to want to check it out. All right. Coaching. Uh, you know, we started Shine On Fast Track and Shine On Elite. If you want to get into some coaching uh, and you'd like to do that with us, you can go to coaching.shineon.com. The media buyers have been absolutely crushing it uh, this year. Um, so anyway, if you want to learn all the tips and tricks and how they're doing it, coaching.shineon.com. We've had a lot of student successes already. So go check that out. Then I think we're getting close here. Shots of espresso. Uh, we're dropping these literally every single week. Um, the media buying team is they're just sharing what they've learned what's working, not working, tips, tricks. It all goes into this kind of PDF document. It gets dropped in the group. Uh, it's great pieces of content. It's free training, honestly. I, it's super high quality, high value, free training. You want to go check that out. Um, just search in the Facebook group for Shots of Espresso. You can also go to the Features tab and you'll find a bunch in there too. We're working hard. We want to actually build a section inside the, the platform where all of these live. So you can just find them anytime you want. Uh, so that's coming soon, hopefully in 2022. And then the 100, 100, 100 challenge. I just look, this challenge has driven over 50,000 sales, 50,000 sales among those who've joined, um, which is just absolutely unbelievable. I'm going to do some math here real quick. 50,000 times 50. Actually, our average um, AOV is, well, it's actually, it's really high. It's like 70 bucks between platform and app. That's $3.5 million in revenue. $3.5 million in revenue driven just from the 100, 100, 100 challenge. So of the students, that's how much revenue they've achieved. We've had nothing but great feedback on the challenge. People said that they learned, they took action. They really like being part of the community where they could kind of join in with others that had a similar goal for Q4. Uh, we are going to be launching another challenge as we move into Valentine's Day. So if you want, if especially if you're new, I highly recommend taking advantage of this. If you want to get in on the challenge, make sure you have your eyes peeled in the early weeks of January. We're gonna be announcing it. We have a much shorter time frame to uh, for Valentine's Day. We don't have like a hundred day run up like we did with Christmas, but still we're gonna use kind of a very similar structure. We're gonna have a leaderboard and everything. So if that interests you, pay attention to the group. The, there is a sign-up period here, right? We open the doors and then we close them. After that, the leaderboard is solid and nobody else gets in. So pay attention to that if you'd like to join. We've heard nothing but great things from this, and it's completely free. It's completely free. So if you're new, take advantage of it. All right. And then finally, the best way to stay caught up is to check the Featured tab inside of the Facebook group. So up at the very top, if you, uh, you'll see, it used to be announcements, now it's featured up at the very top, refresh the page, you'll see a featured thing, click that. Anything that's important, newsworthy, updates, feature releases, new products, whatever it is, all of it goes in there. You can literally just scroll through and get caught up pretty quickly on uh, everything we're bringing to you. We bring a lot, so it's kind of hard to stay caught up. Unless you're here, of course. If you're in Coffee with Michaels, you are on the cutting edge of e-commerce. All right. Let's do it. This is my favorite part of my coffee with Michaels because I actually get to sit back and drink some coffee. Yep. While everybody else talks. So Mario, how do you want to do this? You want to jump right into these screenshots? You want to? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. I'll, I'll just kind of talk over them, and then there's a uh, there's a couple slides with some like yeah, just some basic tips and tricks for you know preparing to scale, and then you know once you're scaling, kind of things to kind of some talking points that should hey, bring up. Before we get to it, um, 
I'm going to try something a little unique this live stream. Uh, so Mario has been a great sport here. He's going to he's going to try to help me out. I'm actually going to share. We're going to get to Q and A in a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to share the live the link to Streamyard in the Facebook group. I'm going to drop it right in the Facebook group. And if you have a question, you're going to be able to click the link and you're actually going to be able to come join us on Coffee with Michael. So if you have a webcam uh, uh, and a mic, uh, you'll be able to come join us on Coffee with Michael and ask Mario your question uh, directly. We've never done this before. I'm going to try it as an experiment and see how it goes. So uh, this is your warning, right? Get ready for that. If you want to take advantage of that, go get your webcam out of the closet, wherever it's at. Get that sucker set up. Get your mic ready to rock and roll. Uh, and you can come join us and hang out here towards the end of the stream. So it's an experiment. We're going to see how it goes. Could go either way, but we're excited for it. So, okay. Now I got that out of the way. Mario? Okay. Take her away. Uh, yeah. So this is one of our student stores in my little coaching group. Uh, I'm running some of the scaling strategies uh, with her. She's a phenomenal uh, businesswoman. Uh, uh, in her own words, she's a bit of an introvert. So uh, I invited her to come on today, but she'd uh, rather keep sitting at home and cranking out and making a ton of money. And uh, she's a very, very impressive businesswoman with this business and a couple others. And uh, I'm having a great time working with her. And yesterday, uh, hit, hit another sales number. Uh, it'd be cool if we could do a million dollar Q4 here. She's done millions in e-commerce in general. But uh, but yeah, but I check that out, like a uh, little cheerleading for Shine On. $800,000 uh, in sales and a return of $2,300. Like, look at the returns on that. It's like nothing. Oh, yeah. Nothing. You know, I was pointing that out to, you know, because I used to coach almost exclusively drop shipping for years, right? So I was pointing that out to some of my uh, some of my students that I, I wish had made the change over this year when I, you know, went almost exclusively to Shine On, right? And I'm like, look at that. Like, there's then there's only like eight chargebacks or something. Like, it's uh, compared to drop shipping, like, it just eliminates such a big pain, you know, traditional drop it's, shipping. It's, that's literally, I just did the math on it. That's literally... That's 30 returns out of 10,500 orders. Yeah. And there'll be more like at the cutoff or something, right? Especially as aggressive as if we can get even more aggressive. But um, That's a, it's, it's a 0. 0.002% return <laughs> yeah. rate. Yeah. It's Less really than cool. 1%. Yeah. I'll be a cheerleader for a minute. It's a really cool business you guys have made. Very impressive and uh, happy to be in it, man. But yeah, so this is, uh, you know, you mentioned before that, uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of uh, Tim Bird. Um, his community is called AdLeaks. Uh, I highly recommend people check it out. I'm not um, pushing it from an affiliate link or anything right now, but uh, I, do, I do have one, but it's a, it's a small investment. He's, his skills are, are, he's the godfather of Facebook ads, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, one of my group members, Gary, him and I went to his mastermind recently. He's in a mastermind with Eric, you know, the owner of Shine On. And uh, he's just always got some tips and tricks that, uh, you know, that that work with work for me. Right. And that's the key. Like, you know, if you're going to do mentorship courses, uh, both uh, you have to connect with the the person that's teaching you that information. Right. It has to be has to be good information and current information. There's a lot of that out there. But uh, if you really connect with their the way that somebody thinks, it can be a total game changer. Right. Totally. Whether, yeah. whether you're working with me, whether you're working with Kirsta, whether you're working, uh, you know, with another mentor, um, yeah, it's huge, hugely important. But yeah, no, uh, we came back from that with just like and just ready to floor it. We came back from that mastermind like a month ago, and uh, you can see the results in this store. Just uh, we'll see how far I can push this one up. Yeah. Yeah, you know, some people just say things in a way that that just clicks and it, you know, kind of unlocks something right. like in your brain when you hear it. And uh, you know, also you got like most people don't realize too that um, especially as you get into look, you're established e-commerce people, right? The guys that kind of have learned the ropes already, they've got the fundamentals down right. and they've got at least enough success to keep sales rolling in. Right. Mm -hmm. When those people go on to buy coaching, they literally are paying $10,000 a month or for a coaching program or for a course for yeah. one golden nugget. I mean, yeah. like, that's literally all they're looking for mm -hmm. to justify the spin. Because one yep. golden nugget can take your entire business to the next level because mm -hmm. it unlocks a limiting mindset that you had or it shows a way that you could do something differently or you get some new ad method that right. allows you to break through the iOS 14 
right. or whatever and, and it is. Millions and millions in spend post iOS. So now there's the real data. Okay, this is what's working right now. And then you're like, sweet, floor it. And you feel confident, right? Yeah, um, absolutely, man. Yeah. But you know, it's key also that you don't get shiny up. It, as good as that information is, it's key that you don't put too much time into that when you're not at that stage, right? If you're in the testing stage, developing stage, that kind of stuff, you, you just have to know that, yes, that's all out there and it's available to you, but don't feel like you have to learn everything. And I ran into this trap, especially after I did like my first million in drop shipping. I, I felt like I had to know everything. And I said yes to everything that came in for opportunities. And <laughs> don't do that. Like realize where you're at in your journey and, and you know, look, get that lock solid, you know, and yeah. then know that there's the knowledge you need to take it to the next level is available out there. Yeah. Most people listening to this probably still need to be working on fundamentals, right? If, I mean, even people that are, you know, scaling for their next one. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Do you want me to go to the next slide? Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, some more uh, some more graphics here. Just uh, looks like one, two, three, four, I think four other students that are putting up some nice numbers. Uh, the one on the left is interesting because you can see we don't run traffic every single day on that one. So that's a tip. So if you can optimize for a particular niche or what's working for you and, uh, you know, set up some rules where there's certain days that just always take your money away. When you have that data point, then you can maximize your profitable days. And uh, it's actually a very saturated product too, but it's been able to make money since the summer, right? Yeah. Uh, the other one at the bottom there would, has that nice spike day. It's an example of somebody just, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, getting their winner just sort of like at the, you know, at the last minute hitting their first winner. And, uh, you know, this, <laughs> this sort of stress tested his whole website and, and everything he's doing, right? And so the next time he hits a winner, he's gonna be able to just maximize returns because yeah, the, site's right. gonna have, the site's just gonna have all the holes that were like, that, that were shown from this quick scale um, and the speed of everything and, and running ads, that's like, you know, invaluable information. So this is really nice. So he's gonna be able to absolutely crush his next one. Can I ask, was this all the same product here? Yeah, and that one had done like uh, hundreds of thousands over the summer too. So it's a it's just really saturated product, but uh, it was able to just like bring in money on certain days consistently since the summer. And then I was able to bring it up and scale a bit. And then um, we'll see. We'll see if we can push it back above 10 grand days right now or not. But there's but certainly a variation of that. This client is working very, uh, very part time, by the way. So <laughs> with enough bandwidth uh, of not having, you know, a, a very successful career and a, and a lot of family obligations, I mean, he put a zero on that because he would have found different variations, optimized the funnel, and we could have, you know, scaled it to the moon. So, but he's making very nice uh, additional money while he's learning, and uh, he's got this skill set to fall back on too. Yeah. What I what I really love about this chart, anyway, is it shows that like you, you're not really out of the fight. And I know that this individual, at least with this product, mm -hmm. did a bunch over the summer too, right? Yep. Yeah, like this this chart here can really apply to almost any product. I mean, if you get started testing early enough mm -hmm. uh, before a holiday and you're getting traction, there's a good chance if you hang in there and you keep you keep taking cracks at it, you keep testing the creatives, you get that pixel more optimized, you're doing changes to your website, trying to increase conversion rate. The closer you get to the holiday and the more buyers that become activated in the marketplace, I mean, you can really start to send it. And I just, I just really like to see how you had three, four, five solid weeks here where you, it was almost like you kept hitting a ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. And then boom, something changed here. You know, it could have been buyers coming online in the marketplace, could have been a change to a it was op really optimization within, uh, within the ad set. Also, yes, that this particular evergreen niche uh, are more later in the buyer season than, uh, than some of the other niches too. So yeah. a combination of factors. But like the fact that you just hung it, like you knew this obviously, but for the, the new folks on the call, you just, you, you stayed with it. You know what I mean? Like I assume that a lot of these were probably break even days, maybe not very profitable. I don't know. I'm speculating. But. Pretty much profitable. Just not anything to blow your socks off profitable, but it all adds up. I mean, the key is, and uh, you know, on your, on your losing days, keep them very, keep your losses very small. And uh, you're locking those profits consistent and stack cash on your, you know, home run days. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Like, yeah. Yep. Totally. I know. Cool, man. All yeah. right. We'll go to the next one. Sounds good. Yeah. All sure. right. Okay. 
Um, just uh, some scaling prep stuff that came to mind today. So, you know, over the years of coaching, you know, POD and drop shipping, one of the most annoying things is somebody works their butt off and gets a winner and it's Q4. And right when they see out like 100 grand or 200 grand or something, all of a sudden Facebook disables you and says, we need you to verify your business. Right. So it doesn't happen to everybody. And I notice, especially with people with older ad accounts, they don't run into problems this particular prompt. Right. But if you, especially with newer ad accounts, uh, you know, out of working with hundreds and hundreds of people over the last like four or five years, it's happened too often. It's like, especially it'll happen at the worst possible time because it'll happen in Q4 and they'll make you submit your documents over and over and over again. And it'll take like two weeks. And it just like, you just missed out on like hundreds of thousands in sales that you'd worked your whole, your butt off to get to that point. Right. So verifying a business manager um, preemptively, especially with newer ad accounts is really important. Okay. So you don't run into that once you, once you are in scale. Okay. Um, and a lot of this next stuff is, you know, you can scale and then sort of realize where your, the holes in your game are. Uh, because once you start to be at a different, you know, level of sales daily, you'll start to see, uh, you'll have a bigger data set. So you'll be able to see where your, where your holes are. Right. So assuming you're running your own site, run, you want to speed test, especially the homepage and even, even more importantly, the product page. So you might have like uh, a big video file or something that's slowing that page down and making that page load twice as slow. And that could literally have your winning conversion rate below a 2% instead of being at a 2.5%. So like you could be leaving most of your profit on the table with something as simple as a video that loads slow. And now, now people are bouncing from your product page at a higher rate, right? Okay. You know, um, I want to add real quick. There's a, so I have a buddy named Robert Norvich Hayak mm -hmm. and um, he like, he goes pretty crazy with conversion rate optimization on his site awesome. but he runs volume all year long and he knows if he can get even a quarter of a percent of conversion rate gain out of a tweak it makes a ton of difference oh, yeah. to okay. his, his bottom line i mean a massive amount of difference so especially when you're at scale this stuff is super important to pay attention to yeah 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 and i know cursor does a lot of uh cro as well and you know in my group we're planning on doing a ton next year um, it's a, it's a huge piece, right? Yeah. hundred percent, man. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when you got your winner and, or you're doing a couple grand a day and it's like small profit, break even, what have you, and you're really ready to start getting aggressive, right? Uh, you want to test as many creatives as possible. So, you know, on a previous coffee with Michael, I had that little infographic of sort of like the creative sandbox idea. So test a lot of UGC, test a lot of different angles of the, of the photo, you know, test some videos. Sometimes those work. It's usually pictures. Test different overlays. Uh, test, you know, different pictures that you take yourself. Some professional looking, some blurry. Test all, test different primary Facebook text uh, as well. Sometimes by putting up like a piece of the quote in the Facebook primary text, then it'll help that product convert at a significantly higher level. Sometimes it doesn't work, right? So, but you want to test a whole bunch of different creatives so that when you get to breaking through your first kind of glass ceilings and scaling of $1,000 a day or $2,000 a day. Um, something that can really help you break through those ceilings is just the power of the creative, right? Yeah. hundred percent. I actually, you know, when it comes to actually testing the ad itself, um, you know, t if you take a brand for, for, for instance, you know, we're in the print on demand space. So you, you always have the luxury of like, you try this product and you try that product and you try this quote and this quote and this quote, and you, you can literally do that you know, all year long. And, you know, you may only find four or five winners, but you might, you know, you, you that's a lot of money in our space, right? If one, you find one, winner, winner. one winner is a job quitter, you know, hundred yeah. percent. So if you, take a, yeah. if you take a brand, like some company that all they sell are is freaking supplements or something like that, they do not have the luxury of trying this product, this product, this product, this, they don't have that luxury, mm -hmm. right? what they have to do is test at the creative level and a lot of agencies, I know a lot of agency owners, what they'll do is they'll say, okay, you have this one product you're trying to sell. Now let's find the winning creative. So it's a mindset difference. We are looking for the winning product. Mm -hmm. They're looking for the winning creative. What we need to do is stack those, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. You find your winning product first, yeah. then you find your winning creative on top of it. And it, it's like jet fuel. Right. You don't want to waste too much time um, making your own creatives for too many of your products that you're testing that just don't have any money behind them, right? It's just not, 
a money making activity, right? You want to be testing more products, and then then you want to be testing more creatives, right? Yeah, hundred percent. So so just to summarize that, and we'll shut up so you can move on here, Mario. Um, mm-hmm. The you know you're saying like just you know throw your best ad into the marketplace on the on the phrase or the product that you're testing. See if you get any traction. If you don't, throw it away. Don't sit there and try five or 10 different creatives on top of it because it's a lot of time, energy, and effort and potentially money, depending on how you do it. You don't need to spend on it. Again, it comes back to every campaign is built on top of a winning product. If you don't have a winning product, everything else is just putting lipstick on a pig. So find the winning product first, then go on to try to find a winning creative for it. Anyway. 100%. 100%. And, you know, time is money too because if you have a mediocre product, and you make a great creative of it, guess what? You'll probably break even or make a couple bucks. But if you put the time into testing more products and then all that effort into the creative, then you made some, you know, some life-changing money, right? And that's Staff a trap right? before, an ego trap, right? After you have your first winners you feel in drop shipping, like you're like, I can make anything work, right? And then I'm like, two months later, I put all this time into a product and I was like, yay, I made a couple thousand dollars. Like, what am I, why did I put so much time and effort into this thing instead of just finding something that would scale easier, right? Totally, man. Yeah. I totally know what you're talking about. Learn from my mistakes, guys. You're like, you know, like lipstick on a pig. Don't don't do that. Like get the get the one that's like your outlier and then and then put your effort into that one because it's gonna go for you. Right. Yep. Find your whale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, scaling prep, uh, this you know, this next one, the post purchase upsell. As you get to higher and higher scale, the data will be more obvious, you know, when you're doing hundreds of sales. Um, when you're doing thousands of sales and you're getting hundreds of sales post-purchase, your, your data will be a lot cleaner, but you will really want to get your AOV up by getting something, uh, something post-purchase sort of in this range. This is the range we've seen, um, across our six and seven figure, you know, projects this year is if you can get something in the 10 to 30% take rate, get your AOV up another 10 bucks or five bucks, even depending on the niche, it's going to make a huge difference in your ability to scale. Yep. I agree hundred percent. As soon as we find a winner, we always, ju- we immediately jump to this. Yep. We're like, how can we get those AOVs as high as we possibly freaking can now? Cool. Um, make sure you got enough credit, <laughs> get ready. You know, uh, it doesn't take a ton, a ton of credit. I mean, I did in drop shipping, I did my first million and a half, um, on a, uh, on a $20,000 credit card, but you know, we were constantly calling the credit card company and asking for, Hey, can we get an extra, you know, 48 hour increase of 30,000 over the weekend or something like that. Right. And especially, um, you know, if you scale very quickly, you might get a hold from Shopify payments or from PayPal. And, uh, if you have the credit to get through that while you're negotiating that hold down, um, it can be a lot, it can go a lot smoother for you. This is, uh, these situations go a lot smoother with shine on with having a production partner, uh, like shine on versus, you know, the drop shipping world, but you can still run into these problems, especially the first time you scale. Um, with your payment providers and, you know, uh, having enough credit will help you weather that storm and still be able to capitalize on your, you know, on your first whale, right? Yeah, this this happens to everybody. I mean, I remember the first time it happened to me, I, I just, I was just, I felt like I was juggling so much. PayPal was frozen. I'm calling the credit card company trying to get an extended line of credit. I'm like, you, you get really creative <laughs> yeah, because sure. you're like, you understand the opportunity you're missing out on. So. Yeah. You find a way, but yeah, it's, it's and you know, I've had, I've had younger uh, members of my group partner with more established business people um, in the past too to scale a product together, right? You don't have to get, you can scale a product together. You can set set up a very you know uh, specific term of uh, and the profit share and all that, and uh, you know if you're, you're surrounded by people that you can trust uh, that can work out very well. I've been, been burned by that before too, but as Michael said, you get creative. To make it happen to make the most money out of You'll, the winner. You will find a way. If, if yep. you're missing money, if you and you know it, yep. you'll find a way. Yeah. You will yeah, find sure. a way. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh make sure you have enough credit. Uh okay, so this one's just like okay. So ideally you're gonna have two credit cards uh that are just dedicated to this project. You know, if you're doing multiple projects, maybe you're doing some drop shipping, maybe you're doing some POD somewhere else and for whatever reason, if, if the card has a failed payment on that one, um, you know, kind of carries over to your ad account health on, you know, your shine on scaling product. Sometimes I've seen if you're using the same credit card amongst multiple products, uh, multiple stores, it's sort of when you get towards any of your billing thresholds, 
it'll sort of slow down the traffic because Facebook's like making sure that those credit card payments go through. And if what if it's like the busiest time of day where you're, you're just printing money, then it can kind of it, they kind of put a governor on your spend. Right. Oh, wow. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it when I ran the same credit card um, on two. So you're saying when you're using one credit card amongst multiple ad accounts? Uh, yeah, multiple ad accounts, multiple websites. Um, it really, it really happened to me the most with multiple websites on the same credit card. I saw the trends and the spend, and I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's the case right now because I, I run it separate now, right? But uh, it definitely, you know, in my first year or two of scaling things up, uh, it definitely slowed things down. I can Interesting. Tell. Yeah, I saw the patterns just consistently, and so I go in and I hit pay now, pay now on two on both accounts, and then more traffic would flood in. It honestly, it's probably better to, I mean. It's unrealistic, but but as much as you can, it's probably good to try to get to one credit card per ad account because if Facebook, you know, takes down your ad account, they might they might slap your credit card while they're at it. And if, yeah. if you've got two or three businesses all or e-commerce stores mm -hmm. all kind of powered by the one yep. credit card, it just the whole, there's a domino effect. Everything gets hit hit and yep. you get shut down overnight. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And you can go a little even deeper on that and have uh, two different credit cards. Um, yeah, this is something that Tim actually brought up in the last master, mastermind. So if you have an Amex and a and a Mastercard as your backup or something, you know if Amex is having a problem problem day in general with Facebook, then at least, then at least you don't have like two Amex cards, right? So yeah. this is uh, I mean this is an uncommon situation, but all it kind of has to happen is once, you know. And uh, you know if it's somebody that comes from the agency world and they've got multiple seven figure clients or something, if Amex and Facebook aren't getting along one day. And they're all just using Amex. That's a bad day all around, right? So that's just a little, uh, just a little extra tip, a little extra layer uh, and, of protection there. And make sure you have a backup payment method on yeah, the ad. That's what I'm saying. You have that as a different credit card, yeah. Mainly to protect your reputation with Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Because um, if you have something that bounces, they they don't forget it. Nope, nope, nope. And even to the the point of you know when you're first scaling, that money means so much to you. Uh, and that credit card doesn't have a history of like doing a bunch of ad spend. Uh, you want it, and let's say you're at a nine hundred dollar threshold or something. You want to like get on the phone with your credit card company and say, "Hey, I'm about to put an eight hundred and eighty dollar payment through. Please pre-approve it and hit that." Right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, man. It depends on how deep, you know if everything's going smooth for you. You don't really have to do that, but you know, especially if you just see like one payment um, get rejected by your Bank of America or whatever you're using, like. Uh, don't let that become a trend, you know, because it can be very problematic for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, that covers that bullet point, I believe. Oh, and just since this is the scaling prep, uh, you want to get your threshold that you can spend your daily threshold raised as quickly as possible. Um, Matt Bay, who's scaling tremendously, that he was he was held back by a few days because uh, he kept hitting his uh, his daily spend. And uh, you know, leaving tens of thousands of dollars on the table, right? Because the uh, because the threshold's there, so everybody runs into that. But you want to get on that as soon as possible. And you know, the newer ad account, they might not raise it for you the first time you ask. They may not give you the threshold that you the daily spend threshold you want. But you need to stay on chat with them to get that. And that's actually the chat feature is like kind of hit or miss. But consistently, the chat feature has always been the go to place to get uh, daily thresholds raised in my career yeah yeah me too every time i've needed it it's where i go to mm -hmm. okay um customer service <laughs> so obviously if you're doing if you're going from doing a couple hundred bucks a day to doing five or ten thousand dollars a day uh more issues come up so you're going to be getting a lot you're going to be getting more tickets than you're used to which can be a bit of a shock but you got to like look at the you know the forest for the trees and you got to be like, oh my god i've got 10 support tickets or something well yeah in a, but you didn't have support because it's relative, right? You used to get one, but now you're at 10,000 a day. Uh, but if you get to the point where you're massively, massively scaling and, or, or if you're like me and you just hate doing customer service, um, I haven't done customer service in like five years, probably six years. I haven't done a single ticket. Um, it's just, I hate that part. Right. <laughs> so you really want to have just sort of like a list of polite and canned responses for your customer service agent. You can hire a VA in the Philippines. It's got, you know, um, that has uh, Shopify experience. Um, there's a lot of good people out there in Upwork. 
um, or, you know, or a friend or family member or, or somebody, but you really want to have somebody for a few hours a day, at least just to, um, to take that off your plate. And you want to yeah, I, I totally agree money. with you. I made a video probably a year ago called, uh, I think it was like how to get to 92 K a day. <laughs> and in it, I actually walk out what I did because you're totally right that, and, and you're totally right that like you're, you're, when you catch a winner, if, if you haven't caught one yet and you catch one, you're probably not going to be prepared, yeah. but you're, you're going to need to be ready to move fast though. Yeah. To get prepared. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas that you're not going to think about, because your, your mind is going to be on the money, right? It's going to be on like making sure your credit cards don't get down and PayPal's got the documentation they need to unlock your funds and yeah. uh, like your test and create, that's where your mind's going to be. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, your, your, whatever you're using for customer service is going to start to get backed up. Yep. And E-commerce customers in particular will email you a lot. <laughs> it's just nature of the beast. They want tracking information. They uh, they want an invoice, a shipping address needs updated, whatever it is. They will email a lot. And having good systems and processes in place so that you can handle all of that kind of as automated as possible is super important. Anyway, go watch my video on how to get to 92K a day because I have like a whole system in there for how I did it by myself i had i had a va actually at the time um and i can't remember how many orders i did in a very short amount of time and we were able to handle it almost flawlessly so uh go check that out but mario i'm actually i'm really glad that you you know you didn't just come on here we're gonna get to the good stuff next but we didn't just come on here and talk about methods ad methods and crap like that you actually talked about prep because i think a lot of people skip this but it's, it really is essential if you want to be able to scale successfully. Like there is a, a foundation that's got to be laid in right. order to support volume. So I'm actually really happy that you came in here and focused on this. I can't tell you how many people, you know, um, that I've worked with that, like you said, as soon as they start to scale or do significant spend, boom, the business manager uh, goes down. In fact, shine on's BM got hit um like a little over a month ago because we started scaling right sure. yep it literally happens to everybody and being prepared knowing it can happen knowing what you're going to do if it happens it's just super important because time is of the essence mm -hmm. uh when you're scaling so yeah to that anyway, point yeah um go ahead and make yourself a backup vm even and don't even put any ad accounts in it just go to business.facebook.com backslash create and go ahead and make if you haven't done so make yourself a backup business manager, because there's all sorts of different levels of disablements you're going to get uh, as you scale. I mean, some people have a really smooth time. A lot of people don't because it's Facebook and you just have to be prepared for the bumps. Uh, but having a backup business manager bef before the potential of your one business manager being disabled, you have a whole nother asset just uh, waiting, right? So that's a good thing to have. You don't want to yeah, run it totally in store as the disabled ad account, but you have a backup business manager. You can do another store. You can do another project. Um, and then, you know, with a different credit card, different ad account, different Facebook page, and, you know, start to be horizontally, uh, diversified, uh, while maybe there's a, a bump in the road of your, of the one you're scaling and you're all geared up. You're not like, you're in this game, you're in it to win it. Like you got your first winner and Facebook puts a couple roadblocks and then, then now you have at least one horizontal backup business manager to keep going. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all about redundancy, mm -hmm. you know? Like if you don't have redundancy, your business is fragile. You know what I mean? Like Facebook can do it, PayPal, credit card companies, anything could happen. And if, if you have no redundancy, it could take your entire business out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just all about thinking through that and trying to get your systems and your infrastructure in place to be able to withstand the storm that is going to come. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. At least at least some of this stuff's going to happen. Right. That we're talking 100 percent. You're, you're going to you might as well put a number next to these and give people some die. And just let them roll the dice because that's about what it's going to be. They're going to get hit with something on this list. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a black a mole as you yeah, scale. For, for sure. Time. For sure. All right. Let's uh, keep going, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Scaling tips. So, hey, before we get to these, mm -hmm. Q&A is next. So Mario's going to walk us through these as the scaling tips. We're going to go semi quickly here. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to drop that StreamYard link below. So if you want to join us, get prepared now. Right. I'm going to be dropping it here in a minute. So, Mario, take her away, buddy. 
Skin so, so I try to keep these pretty broad. Um, feel free on the, you know, to ask questions and I'll get, um, you know, more detail on some stuff that I'm seeing working. Um, and this, you know, it's working for us too. So uh, scaling tip, have automated rules, uh, you know, just like a stop loss kind of rule, whether you're going to use a third party, uh, you know, something like magic X, which I know you guys use internally or, you know, reveal bot at a certain scale, it makes sense to get a third party to automate rules. But at the very least, you can set up something that, you know, if this ad set has a cost per purchase over a certain amount, have Facebook pause it. Okay. Uh, because when you're scaling, you're gonna have a lot of campaigns, you're gonna have a lot of ad sets, you might have a lot of different strategies that you're scaling simultaneously, which Krista talks about, he's using like, five different strategies to scale at the same time, right. And each strategy is going to want different rules and different stop out points, or else you can, um, even though you're on a winner, you know, it could be just a bad day in the auction for you and your niche, maybe it's Black Friday and huge brands have put all this money into the system. And if you don't, your rules don't stop you out early enough in the day so that you make a small loss or a break even day out of that, then, uh, you know, you can really burn some cash on a day like that. So you, and also you can sleep at night. You can get away from the computer screen as you scale up to 10, 20, 30, 40 and above days. Um, it's a lot of buttons to click uh, and you want to just go to lunch or something and you just have that automated rule so you can uh, do so and then you can sleep better at night too right it, it starts to feel like day trading a little bit oh for so, sure that's how i approach it i actually did that for a living for a little while yeah. so funny story my my wife's birthday is december 17th mm -hmm. and so in oftentimes that's the last day of shipping for shine on okay and um i remember one day i was scaling and i think i did 70 or eighty thousand dollars in revenue on this particular day but i spent like $25,000 or something. Yeah, and I remember awesome. I had plans to take my wife out for the yeah. evening and I promised her I'd turn my phone off. <laughs> and I just remember like I was spending used car money every hour, you know, yeah. <laughs> while we were, we were out doing this thing. And uh, I just remember how terrified I was. And if it wasn't for Facebook's automated rules, you know, to kind of stay on top of it, I don't think I could have done it. <laughs> Right. It, it was the one thing that kind of saved me uh, uh, during that whole thing. So, yeah, I totally agree. They're super important. And part well, of it too, is like if you're on a very profitable day, you might get greedy and let Facebook take back too much of your money. That's the other thing, right? 100%, you, man. Like, you know, like it's kind of like in, it's a, you lock in a certain amount of profit with a rule and you know, can walk away. And then if the, you know, if the tide turns against you, as it often does when you're having a really good day, it hits your stop points. Money's taken off the table. Facebook can't like change the dealer on you and, and give you bad traffic because you've taken your profits for the day. Well, I was going to say, if nothing else, having automated rules, it forces you to build the system in the process. Mm -hmm. You need to do this successfully. Right. You know what I mean? You have to think through that stuff to build the rules. And that in and, in and of itself is a valuable exercise. Sure. Anyway, go, go ahead, buddy. Okay. Um, so it's an uncomfortable situation when you're breaking through to new levels. Uh, let's say you're used to doing, you know, three to 500 a day and, you know, you break, you're hitting the sort of glass ceiling of like $2,000 days. You've implemented some sort of scaling strategy. that's more aggressive and um, expect that the first two, three days are going to be rocky, right? You're getting, you're getting to know the strategy. You're getting to optimize uh, within your, within your ad account. You're stress testing, you know, your website and everything in your funnel. And uh, you know, you might have a couple of days where you, you know, hit two grand for the first time, you lose a couple hundred bucks. Um, then you know, learn from that data and don't, you know, don't freak out, right? And uh, you know, day three might be your day where you really break off, right? And it's okay to, um, you know, every time you get to a new level, you get to five grand a day, to ten grand a day, twenty grand a day. It's okay to just like, you know. Get aggressive, especially when you're playing with the house money because you've made some profits on the way up to those new points. It's okay to hit like a 30 grand day for the first time at like a small profit or a break even or something like that and be like, all right, well, not, my system's not ready or this niche and this product is not ready for 30 grand days. And then drop down to 12 or 15 grand days and you'll have like an awesome ROAS right after that. Right, The momentum from that 30 grand day will also feed a lot of frequency to those same uh, same people within the audience, okay? And also have your SMS sequences, your email follow-up sequences. So that break even 30 grand day can really fuel some really nice high row as like 10 or 15 grand days right after it. 
right? And so for the whole three, four day or week period, um, you know, even if you broke even on that the first 30 grand day, you make a lot of money that week because of that momentum, right? But don't feel like you have to keep staying at that 30 grand day the first time. Drop it down, make some money, and then take a swing at it again on a, on a day where the tide's in your favor and you have more optimization. Right? Dude, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. The, the, I learned this kind of without a coach that um, scaling every day is not always the answer. Sometimes you got to lock in your return on your ad spend. Mm -hmm. I, and I remember one day, everyone's probably going to laugh at me, but I was scaling, 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 and I wasn't turning anything off until it broke, fell below my break even. Mm -hmm. And I just remember how like uh, eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night would roll around and like at three or 4 PM in, in the same day, I would have right. a ton of profits. Sure. And then by eight, nine, 10 PM, all those profit, profits are basically washed out because I didn't, I didn't lock the profits in as soon as the uh, ROAS started to drop. Sure. Right. I didn't lock them in. I just let it keep running to break even before I turned it off. And I remember I was just throwing away money. I had this like light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. Hey, ROAS is actually greater than these like kind of unicorn numbers you want to make take screenshots of, mm -hmm. you know, lock in those profits. That's really what matters. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, OK, so let's see what else do I have here for some bullet, bullet points. Uh, yeah, we talked about hitting the sky there. Um, OK, so if you adopt a day trading type mindset when you're scaling uh, uh whatever you're using to scale as a system okay maybe it's a cbo manual bidding with a bunch of different bid points a bunch of different audiences maybe it's a shotgun strategy from tim bird whatever it is if it's this strategy based on you have this huge potential spend but you have a lot of rules in place where you're going to cut off different ad sets and different ads you're going to scale other ones up you might cut off whole strategies for the day and you might have enough optimization maybe in a manual bid that your rule is that even though it has a bad morning, you let it spend through. It depends on the strategy you're using, right? But you need to realize there's like three main days that you're going to kind of go through, okay, with this day trading strategy. There's your sort of average day on a winner where, you know, you can be pretty confident, like let's say you're in 10 or 15 grand days, you're confident that you do your strategy, and things are going to go smooth. You're going to do one, a 1 1.8 or a 2.5 or something like that at your like sort of baseline number. And that's your sort of like decent day. And you keep banking a, a grand or two, or three grand a day. And awesome. Make sure to take your profits and optimize some more so you can push it higher, push that ROAS higher, stay at the same ROAS and hit, you know, 25 grand days, right? So that's sort of your like baseline day, right? So you want to make sure that those are always profitable for you, You're hitting your base hits, okay? Then there's your great days where you, you get at the computer in the morning and everything's looking good. Like you want to, you want to spend as much, you want to get super aggressive and uh, just stack some cash and then not get greedy at the end of the, at the later hours of the day. Um, maybe, maybe you've like intraday raised budgets or something and you have, but you, so you have all this potential spend later in the ad account day and Facebook might rapid spend and take back all your money. Right. Don't let that happen. Right. Just like, Take that money, get super aggressive while you have the time and, you know, in your trends, if there's like a nine o'clock spike, you always see get aggressive into that spike. And then if you see that, you know, midday stinks for you, but you have a great afternoon, get aggressive into that. Keep that, you know, factor those sort of patterns in of when you're actually printing the money. And then let's say every day, for example, after 7 p.m., like you never make any money. Well, unless it's like just an absolute unicorn of an ad set that doesn't have a lot more potential spend. Take your profits, you know, take your profits and walk away, you know, and bank those things. And then there's the third day, which I call like the dig out of the gutter day. And these are the days you get at the computer and nothing's going right. And uh, you can either, you know, just stop out and turn everything off and take not a full day's loss. Or if there's some things in your system that allow the whatever percentage of strategies that are working for you that day or ad sets, 10 or 20 percent of them are still working, even on a terrible day. If you allow them to sort of dig you out of the gutter. Maybe you're a couple grand loss in the beginning of the day, like a grand loss in the middle of the day by the night, you're just down a couple hundred bucks. Great. Because on your winning days, you're making like three, four grand in profit. And now you've just dug yourself out of the gutter instead of pushing through on a terrible day and losing like the whole day's profit from the day before. These are the most important days. If you can keep your, if your loss is small and your gains big, you will have a very long lucrative career in uh, media buying.
hundred percent. It's the same for day trading. You can see right. the principles yeah. come right across. Hey, before we get to the um, other three bullets here, um, if you guys want to join, right? Mario's kind of a coach in the e-commerce space. He's had tons of success, tons of successful students. He really knows what he's doing when it comes, well, really at every level of the business. I mean, he knows how to find your winners, fine tune the winners. He knows how to scale them to, to, to big numbers. If you have any questions for Mario, right? doesn't matter where you're at uh, in your journey. It could be totally new. You could be trying to scale something right now. You could be scaling something right now. You could be just getting started and trying to you know, build the best foundation you can so that you can take advantage of Valentine's Day, perhaps. Wherever you are at in your journey, if you'd like to ask Mario a question or myself, you can join the stream and ask it. I'm dropping the link right now in the comments of the Facebook group. Here it comes. I just dropped the link. I'll drop it. Uh, I'll copy paste that a couple times here. Maybe. Great. Can I do that? Well, here it is right there. If you'd like to come on here and ask your questions, hit this link. Um, it's going to bring you into StreamYard. It's a web-based kind of uh, tool where you're going to have to give it access to your, your camera and your mic and things like that. Put in your name. Come join us. Uh, you're going to join kind of a lobby. You're not going to be on screen yet. You're going to be in a lobby and I'm going to have to bring you on screen um, in order for you to ask your question. So if you'd like to join us, hit this link. You're going to be brought into the lobby. I'm going to let Mario kind of continue here um, through the rest of his scaling tips. But then we're going to start having folks join the panel to ask questions. Um, and Matt, no, no question is too basic. No question is too. Well, maybe there's two advanced ones. Challenge me, please. Yeah. But yeah. no question too basic. Like, don't be, you know, don't be embarrassed um, uh, about any question at all at any stage you're at. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, Kirsta, Matt, Ba, uh, you know, anybody else that's that's kind of watching this that that's been on here before is a an authority. If you'd like to join as well, feel free to uh, hop on here, and uh, maybe we can get a little panel going just for fun. Great. Great. So, all right, uh, scaling tips. Last three bullets. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so last of the three, keep your winners uh, big and your and your losers small. That's a uh, you know we we talked about that, and that is really where the rubber hits the road. I mean, uh, you know, it can be frustrating to do like a big number day um, at break even, but that's that was a losing day, but you broke even, okay, and you have the momentum to make a lot more money the next day. Or you know, it, you the worst is when you have great couple days and you're just getting hooked on that. I'm making three grand profit a day or whatever, right? Don't let that, don't let your head get too big and pretend to see something the next day that's not really there, right? Like if your rules are firing off, uh, if you're, the framework of your scaling is telling you today's not the day, don't pretend to see something there, right? And I, uh, I had this problem in my twenties when I was day trading. I made a ton of money doing something very boring. Um, not a ton of money, but at the time it was a ton of money. I mean, very good money doing something very boring. And then once I had, you know, tripled my my savings, uh, I started to feel like I could trade anything at any point in the day, like in, like a like an idiot. My head got too big, right? So, you know, just really look at what's happening for what it is, right? And that comes with experience, but you don't have it doesn't have to be as hard of a journey for you as it was for me, right? Yeah, it's well, it's just you know, humble yourself, or the market will humble you. You know, yes, yes. like one way or another, you're going to learn the lesson. <laughs> right. So yeah. anyway, or maybe Shopify is down that day and you didn't even know about it. But your your lack of performance, your conversion rates, like half of what it should be or something like something's broken. You don't know what it is yet. But don't push through it. Like let your let your stuff stop out. That's not working. And, uh, uh, you know, then troubleshoot or, totally, or, or go to the beach and just tomorrow is another day. Right. hundred percent. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. What else we got here? Um, okay. So a lot of times you think you have a winner and this, this uh, can be based on your data or just because you really love it and you just, it's almost working and you're falling in love with it. Okay. If it's not scaling, uh, it's not behaving like it should. And it's just not, it's not getting through those barriers. Well, it's just not the right product at the right time to the right people. It's just not strong enough. But the concept of it might be close enough that if you test enough variants of it, you'll find a version that will get you there, right? Maybe you find you look, maybe you find a trending graphic structure 
that seems to be working really well this Q4. Maybe you find that your niche is responding to longer form copy than you have. So you have to frank and quote in, you know, some other stuff, whatever it is. There's a, maybe you're seeing that white backgrounds are working better in your niche or dark backgrounds. Maybe you're seeing that a certain font pairing or some bolding, whatever it is that you need to do to make that almost strong enough product strong, go for it. But at the same time, it's a balancing act because there might be some more like phase one testing you're doing that takes way less effort. And that's the one that, that cranks you through it. So, um, Again, it's more of a, it's a, it's, you take a swing at, at something to scale. Um, hopefully it does scale. If it doesn't, one of the moves you have is to try to strengthen that product. Right. Totally, man. Uh, and then we talked about this before. Always, always keep testing creatives, whether you're scaling or, you know, preparing to, preparing to scale your winner. Um, you know, we saw it on, what, for Father's Day when I was on here with, uh, um, well, with Tiffany, right? She made this phenomenal creative that, took them from a couple grand a day break even to like 30 grand a day yeah. and profit margin because she made this awesome creative. And that that was, you know, saved the day for Father's Day and was really impressive. Right. So and, you know, my first winner and I may have talked on it here was, you know, 2015, 2016. It's like a free plus shipping watch. And it was at a couple grand a day making a couple hundred bucks. Some 16 year old kid in uh, like Germany tags me on Instagram, this beautiful picture of the watch. I throw that in all my marketing. I'm at 25 grand a day, a couple of days later at a huge ROAS because that creative was just so strong. So uh, always test it, creative. Dude, a winning creative, it really can make a ton of a uh, ton of difference. So, all right, let's summarize this very quickly. So use your automated rules, right? Lock in your profits and keep your losses as small as possible. Uh, and then, you know, test, your creatives after you find a winner. I mean, if I could summarize at least the highlights here, I think that's kind of what I heard. Would you? Did I miss anything? Um, uh, yeah, just and also the, a little bit of the pace when you're scaling for the first time. Know that like your first couple of days might be mediocre. You're just building up the momentum and you're building up your own optimization and you're looking for holes in your system. Like you're stress testing everything because you're going for two grand a day or 10 grand a day for the first time. So like Facebook needs to build up the momentum. You need to optimize within your strategy, your, your website and your post purchase upsell, you know, literally the product page being the second loading too slow. Like all these things become obvious. Maybe you go into your SMS app and for some reason you didn't fill it out right. And so it's not shooting off, you know, something that should be giving you 7% of your sales, which could be like your whole margin when you, when you first scale until you get the momentum. So, you know, uh, the stress testing of your initial scaling, Realizing that as you push to new points, um, don't, don't get frustrated. Like if you have a couple of mediocre days, scale it right back down and have a higher row as, and then go for it again. Right. Totally. So look, this was kind of a dense coffee with Michael. Um, we really kind of got stuck into it, which was good. So, you know, this may be one you guys got to go back and watch again. And all of that is uh, uh, completely fine. I mean, sometimes, uh, these are going to be easier. Sometimes they're going to bring you more advanced stuff, but that's what we're doing here. We're just trying to help everybody, um, you know, take their game to the next level. So I've got quite a few people that have uh, joined in here, um, awesome. some with cameras on, some with not without cameras on. We, we are going to, this is going to be a total experiment. I am not responsible for anything that happens on this <laughs> after this point. <laughs> so. Uh, look, I'm going to go to Esteban first here. Um, Esteban, I'm going to give you just, you know, quick four or five seconds here to uh, uh, get yourself ready if you're not already. Um, so you are coming up, my friend. I know that, by the way, I think the stream, I think it's like 30 seconds behind. I don't know. Hey, Esteban, if you're ready and you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. All right. He's real time here. He's ready to rock and roll. All right. Let me bring you up here. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Oh, great, thank you. Good, First, man. Your audio is coming good. in great. Is it uh, Esteban? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Where Where are you tuning in from? Uh, Long Island, New York. Long Island. Nice. But Welcome, from Chile buddy. originally. What? From Chile originally. From, very nice, man. How long have you been in Long Island? Three years. That's awesome. From Chile to Long yes. Island? Three yes. years? Great. How long have you been selling with Shine On? Actually, like uh, a month and a half. Okay. I started, I, I pay for a course, right? Mm -hmm. Through my other business is Amazon. 
mm -hmm. right? Okay. So I saw the course was good, but then I saw all the videos you have in China. And I said like, oh, you know, you have all the information there, you know, from the other course there, you have some nuggets, which is good. But um, I followed the process like you have, you know, and I didn't want to wait and I started to put money, you know, and the first day, no, the second day I got my first sale. Mm -hmm. you know, good for like, you, great. man. Hey, can I, can I hit the pause button on you real quick? Sure. What, what course did you, did you take? Uh, it's called SCUP. Oh, okay. You took, got it. So you took the SCUP course. Okay. Fantastic. And then, um, how did you hear about Shine On originally? Oh, through them. Through that. Okay. Program. Got it. You saw a YouTube from, video? From or... Because I'm in a, in that group of Amazon. I am, uh, I sell products on Amazon. So it's a group. And sometimes the owners of that, uh, uh group, they come up with different kind of business model. True. Okay. And that's kind of how you heard about Shine On. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. So, um, you, you were antsy, you got in there, started spending money and you yeah. got a, you said you got a sale your second day. Yes. Yes. And then I tried different ones and then I didn't get sales for two days and tried different, uh, creatives phrases. And I, you know, and then I got to another sale, but I wasn't making money. Right. And then because of the Amazon background I have, you know, uh, we hire, um, a mentor and that speed up my process a lot you know because i didn't make the mistakes that uh most new of you you know they they do so that's um and then i started here in this china and i started to make a, a lot of etsy products mm -hmm. right List okay. and now i'm uh, like a, i'm getting like one sale a day mm -hmm. you know Good for you yeah, because it's uh, it's like a free money, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we we're getting sales still, yeah. So so Esteban, how can we um how can we help you? For me, for me, it's like I have seen what's uh, the uh, how important it is to have a mentor because if I keep doing this my own, on my own, I I like to you know to watch the videos and the information, but I know that once you get a, a mentor, you know, speed up the process and probably I will save a lot of money too. Sure. 100%. You know, so I have I've have been uh, looking about the the different courses you have. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Mario has one. So my, mm -hmm. my idea was like, a, what would be the best uh, kind of the, the courses to take? You know, because I, I I I have seen organically that I can make sales with this, and I and putting money on it on Facebook ad and knowing how to do it, I know it's gonna work. You know, just I would like to have somebody who's go goes with me. You know, at with, I mean, in the, in this road. Totally. So, yeah. so Mario, I'll let you, uh, let you sure. go first here, man. Sure. So I, I have a group coaching and one-on-one -on -one program that I've been running for, um, better part of four years now, drop shipping and POD. We're getting some great results. Okay. So I'm obviously biased towards my program. I'm also in shine on's group and, uh, they have a wonderful program as well with, uh, with Kirsta. So I would say, uh, uh, join my group or join mine and, uh, shine on's. Okay, so is there any any uh, link where I can just check it out? Uh, uh, yeah, just just hit me up on Facebook with a message, man. Just a uh, friend request me. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, and by the way, anybody and, uh, listening, yeah. um, look, I'm kind of agnostic here. I just want everybody to succeed, mm -hmm. right? And some people are going to click with Mario's kind of style. Some people may sure. click with more like kind of what we have going on um, with Kirsta and our group. Uh, you know. Wherever you feel you align best with the coach, you know, and you click best and you kind of understand their approach to things, I encourage you 100%. So anybody listening, if you're interested in Mario and kind of what he's doing, and we were going to kind of recap that here at the end, feel free to reach out to Mario mm -hmm. and jump on a, a call with him. You're, you're in good hands with Mario. He's produced a number of uh, successful students. So reach out to him. If you want to look at kind of what we have going on, you can go to coaching.shineon.com, coaching.shineon.com. Um, we've got kind of a landing page there. And uh, Kirsta is currently leading kind of our coaching group. Um, and that's kind of a monthly thing. So look, wherever you think you're going to fit, um, go there. I, I just highly encourage people. I'm a big, I drink, you know, I take my own medicine here. I'm a big okay. advocate of getting coaching, taking courses, continuing your education and investing in yourself. So go do that.
Excellent. Yeah, man. Look forward to talking to you. But uh, yeah, you're good. You're in great hands with me. You're in great hands with the with the Shannon coaching as well. Yeah, no, I have seen I have seen the value, you know, uh, and what you are doing, you know, with this uh, coffee with Michael. It's like a, so much value, you know, because I'm I'm, I'm telling yeah. it's like the other people too, maybe they're watching that uh, I pay, you know, like a thousand dollars for a course that most of it I could have learned just watching the videos of you guys. You know, awesome. there's different kind of. Uh, nuggets you can get from other places, or they do it differently. But the core material, you know, is here and it's free. You know, and that's you know, I'm really grateful for that. You know. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. We're just happy to serve. Yeah. Thank so, you. Really, thank you very much. Really appreciate it, bud. Thanks for coming on and asking your question. Uh, if you don't mind, I think I'm going to get to somebody else because we got kind of a queue building up here. But thank you very much, Esteban. Appreciate you, buddy. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. You too. All right. So, okay. So, hey, just so everybody knows, because um, there's kind of a line forming here, I'm going to be giving preference to people that are on video, right? Because this is a video kind of format. So I'm going to give preference to folks that uh, have video. I will get to people that don't have video, but uh, the preference is going there first. So, okay. Next up is going to be Salvador. Salvador, if you're ready, can you give me a little thumbs up here? All right. Here comes Salvador, everybody. Get you up here. What's up, Salvador? How you doing? Hey, what's going on? Hey, man. Hey, buddy. Hey, your audio's coming in loud and clear. We can hear you. Hey, tell us how you found out about Shine On real quick. Um, I was doing PLD a few years ago, selling T-shirts, and um, I was still pretty much of a rookie. And I was watching a video of some some guys, some gurus, and they spoke about Shine On and when I was actually doing PLD, it was space related. And I wasn't selling a lot of shirts. So I ran across a bracelet and the bracelet sold very well. Mm -hmm. So then when I heard about Shine On and jewelry, then I kind of like meshed them Got together. It. It, it was, you were in the space niche, huh? So was it the little bracelet with the planets on it? It was it was made out of glass. It was oh, okay. it looked like it was a galaxy or whatever, God. and it was just fabric and glass, and it sold for like fifty bucks. Wow. So I thought, you know, PLD plus jewelry. So I kind of put them together. Um, Very nice. I kind of full on. So that's how I started. Yeah, and so I I believe you're actively scaling uh, right now, if I'm not uh, mistaken. So uh, how can we help you? What questions you got? Well, what was that on the scaling? Um, I started a different country specifically because mm -hmm. it I tested it before um, the UK center opened and I got very good traction, but then I stopped because of the shipping. But now that you know that's been sorted out, and I had a few first good days, like really profitable. And then once I started to scale, it kind of kind of went down a little bit. So it's a small country. My theory is that it's so small, it's hard to find buyers. I've been doing a little well, bit of was your product very niche or was it broad, sort of like broad market appeal? It's very, very broad. You know, husband. Very broad. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So um yeah, I just I don't know. I've been trying different things, ABO, CBO, mm -hmm. um, different products. Uh, but yeah, it's how how does it do if you run it to the US? Um, it's because it's specific to the language, so it's, oh, okay. like, language. it's like uh, lingo. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's a different. Um, I don't want to review, but it's 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 another language. It's 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 not English language. So okay, so um, it, it it is actually even though it's broad reach, it's a smaller niche within a smaller country. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're probably that that's probably your the biggest problem you're running into. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got a member of our group. He's doing extremely well to a certain language in the U S. Um, but he seems to hit a ceiling at a certain point that his points, uh, a very profitable point, but, uh, he's, uh, you know, jealous of some of the other numbers for the, you know, the U S the, the English speaking stuff. Right. Yeah. So any, any individual, the, the more you niche down, uh, the scalability can be tough, especially Q4 too. So you got this like smaller piece of a smaller country and then you got, who knows, for big brands that are also have audiences crossing over your small piece of that smaller pie. And in the fourth quarter, it can just really, they can really muscle you out. Like one individual seller 
uh, selling, we don't, I mean, it could be a dog subscription box or something, and they're just buying up your whole, um, your whole niche because they can take a cost per purchase of 150 bucks on a $20 product. And they know six or seven months later, they'll, that's when they hit their LTV, um, profitability, right? So with the smaller niches, like you don't even know what you're getting must might be getting muscled out by. Um, sometimes those smaller niches literally, uh, as of like Christmas or January or something, if you're in the romance niche, uh, the January cost, you know, CPMs might be cheap enough that it works then. Right. Yeah. But with the yeah. bigger, with the bigger niches, like, you know, you know, the kind of numbers that are out there, you know, people are doing $20,000, $100,000 days, you know, that it's, you can get your piece of that. But when you're in something small, there's just not as much data um, that I can you know, lean on to let you know, right? Yeah. So are you recommending, would you recommend a niche change then or? I'm just trying to diagnose like what he, what situation he might be in. Um, you know, obviously if I knew the niche and I knew the audience sizes and and a little bit more, I could, I, I could say that. But it sounds like if, if, the, if you're in something super small or like relatively small in the fourth quarter where it's highly competitive, um, that combination can be tough. Right. Yeah, that was my theory. That's what my theory mm -hmm. because. But he's in the love niche. It's just his, this particular um, phrase is very, is more yeah. niche within a niche country in the love mm -hmm. niche. So like he's in a great niche for this time of the year. I mean, you got to, yeah, another what, another week of selling now. Um, you may, you'll make a few sales between now and, you know, Christmas and January, and then you got Valentine's day and then the love niche is evergreen too. I mean, we've had people doing $10,000 plus days in the slowest months of the summer, you know, so, uh, love niche is great. Yeah. I also do, uh, like Spanish, you know, so mm -hmm. I know I, I can hit a ceiling there too. Mm -hmm. Um, just, I guess my second question to that is, is that I've tried kind of like, like English, but then I feel like. Because I've got I've got a lot of sales in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I feel like my I don't know if my account and everything just so optimized for that audience that well, how many how many sales to the Spanish market on that ad account? Um roughly like forty eight hundred. Okay. So yeah, that's quite a bit of optimization, sure. So I don't I I don't have to change like pixels and, and accounts, but now with, with the whole aggravated measurement thing, I don't know if mm -hmm. That's why. I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's quite a bit of optimization into the Spanish market. So, um, I mean, if it was me, I'd, I'd have a second store for English. Um, or if you want to overcomplicate your life and you're very technically oriented, you could use an app like Trackify and um, and Hyros and like have a whole bunch of other uh, data and maybe, you know build your data stack of of softwares so that you can run multiple things into that same store. But I find it way easier just to spin up a second store. With the new ad account, warm that thing up, and uh, and then you also you're horizontally diversified that way too. And then maybe you want to sell your Spanish store at one point or your English store at one point too, and the assets are separate that way. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, hey Salvador, uh, I appreciate you joining, buddy. Um, I've got a little bit of a queue here, so if you don't mind, I want to uh, just respect everybody's time here. Um, do you have any Do you have any parting questions, or are we good? No, we're good, man. Thank you for your time. Hey, thanks so much for joining, dude. Really appreciate you for coming on. Take care. Hey, so um, I'm just gonna let everybody know we've got uh, we've had some folks actually drop off, mm -hmm. um, probably just because um, you know, we can be this guy can be a little long winded sometimes. So hey, uh, let's uh, these other questions that here I'm gonna start bringing some folks on. Let's mm -hmm. we're gonna try to uh, do these a little bit faster Sounds to get good. through the queue. Again, I'm kind of uh uh given priority to folks with video on Kristen, i see that you are up um if you are ready can you give me a little thumbs up here in the camera are you ready Kristen? oh there we go i can see i think you lagged for a second i can see you now all right here we come Kristen, thanks for joining us today hi how are you? i'm good how are you good thanks for uh thanks for asking where are you joining us from today I'm in uh, Minnesota where we're getting ready for maybe eight inches of snow this afternoon. So hunkering right, down. Well, enjoy that. That'll be fun. Yeah. Um, not so so much. Uh, what questions do you have for uh, for Mario here? Hi, Mario. Um, I'm kind of a newbie. I just I joined the 100, 100, 100K challenge and uh, didn't really do great, but that's on me. I was on vacation most of September. Mm -hmm. and But I learned a lot, so I'm really going to ramp up for Valentine's Day. 
Um, but one of my big questions was I really wanted to try to sell in language designs in the EU once you launch the Amsterdam facility. Uh, I don't really have the stomach for Facebook ads yet. I'm just, you know, kind of small player. So I'm just doing the Etsy integration organic mm -hmm. traffic. Mm -hmm. So if I want, can I sell that way by just using Etsy organic traffic? And if so, should my titles and tags and keywords be in language or a combo of in language and English or uh, something else like gift for Polish so grandma? To be honest, my Etsy department's run by my sister. My sister mm -hmm. is tutored by Anna Beck. Okay. Oh, okay. So I would start with Anna Beck's um, free free group, and I highly recommend you get the um, her course as well. And okay. uh, she's uh, she's who we're the reason we're doing five hundred or thousand a day right now with Etsy with a very new store. Um, it's only a few months old. Uh, uh, is that you know my sister's really smart, and then she's working really hard. But it's at Anna Beck's uh, uh, tutoring, so that's okay. going. To, that's that's a perfect question for her group. Okay. Her, her group is uh, Shine On Selling Strategies. Mm -hmm. If you want to search on Facebook, it's Shine On Selling Strategies. Okay. And Anna Beck is really good with Etsy and Amazon. And also, there there is some um, there are some tricks to make Etsy work internationally. I, I think when you open the store, you actually have to say, I think you have to say the store is in Amsterdam in order to be able to sell to to the EU. I think. So Etsy, uh, Anna would actually know most of the answers to that. So if you open your Etsy store and you say that the store is in the U.S., I don't think you're going to have access uh, to the audience over there. Um, but since we have a facility in Amsterdam, there are some ways around that, I believe. So Okay. Well, that's good to know before I get too far down. So I will look her up. And can I just ask one really quick nuts and bolts question? Absolutely. Um, I've been having trouble integrating my uh, platform listings over to Etsy. It worked for a while. And now when I go and try to duplicate the listings to my Etsy store, they go into limbo. They never show up in my drafts or anything. And this has been going on for a few days. Like I gave them plenty of time to populate, but they're just not showing up. What have I done? <laughs> well, I, I, that may not be a you problem. Could be an us problem. Could be an Etsy problem. Uh, one of the things that, that starts to get complicated when we have an integration is, you know, if Etsy changes some little thing, we got to go change some little thing or we make some update, you know, further upstream that impacts our integration, things like that. Those things happen often. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so have you opened a support ticket on it? Because that's probably where I'd steer you. With Shine On? Yes. I have not. But that will be my next step. I was thinking. Um, yeah, I'd probably open a support ticket um, just in case we're not already aware. Um, okay. I'd imagine we are, but you never really know. And okay. then uh, I will I will let you know support's just a little bit backed up because this is the what? craziest time of year for us. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> please be patient, but they will get to you. Okay. Um, I have some friends that I'm just in a little side Facebook chat with, and I asked them, and they do some of it too, and they didn't report some similar issues. So I'm hoping it's not just a me issue, but I will do a support ticket. And okay. I'll look up Anna Beck right now, and thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much for joining and being brave coming on yeah. here with the camera. Yeah. Good <laughs> luck with the snow. Take care. Thank you. All right. Um, next, uh, we're going to – uh-oh. You'll need to connect your mic. Oh, you know what? We have some people in queue, but it's not going to let me add them to the stream. So um, – we can do some questions if they just type them out, if you're out of people that are connected properly. Yeah, let's. I only want to take maybe one or two more questions here. Um, we're going on an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, so Gary and Laura and everybody else here kind of in line, um, StreamYard's not letting me add you because it's saying you don't have your mic or camera connected to StreamYard. So um, if you hit the three little dots, um, kind of in the, the 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 thumbnail where your name's at. If you hit the three little dots, and you go to, oh, what would it be? It'd be uh, uh, edit. There should be like a, a mic cam kind of option in there. You can configure your mic and your cam. But unfortunately, until you get there, I cannot bring you on. So all the questions are going to have to be in the in the Facebook group here. We'll do like one or two more, and then I think we're going to. Uh, Wrap this up. That good with you, Mario? That sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. Or you can just right. lighten around them, whatever you want to do. Yeah. So um, if you have a question, drop them in the Facebook group here 
or you can join the link on the screen. If you do join us, you got to configure your, your cam and your mic or else I can't bring you on, unfortunately. So lesson learned. We'll do that in the future. Um, I'm actually glad we tried this, though. This has been kind of a cool experience, and uh, I'd like to do it again in the future. In fact, it might be cool to have kind of like an end, end of the year party or just yeah. a big open stream with like a thousand people. That would be pretty sweet. Um, all right, let me let me crawl through the chat here. Uh, Esteban, um, oh, he joined us, asking where he can find out more about Mario. Yeah, he actually he actually just sent me a private message, so I'll reach out to you in a little bit, man. For anybody else wondering, just just shoot Mario a message here, um, and he'll get you squared away. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see any other questions in the chat? It kind of so sucks. Laura's asking about a product, I think. Not, I don't see all the questions. Um, I'm seeing Laura are. says, uh, I'd love some advice on what I should do with a test campaign right now. I'm getting a 3.5 to 5% uh, click-through rate on, the, on all of her ad sets. She spent $66, had two purchases. She's selling on platform and asking for any advice. Um, well, it's great click-through rate. Uh, it's click-through rates... This is like uh, maybe not answering your question directly, but it's an important tip for everybody. There's curation clicks, and then there's clicks that are congruent with a sale, right? So if you kind of know your baseline of what a normal straight on message card um, is gonna get you for a click in a certain audience at a certain time of the year, and then you do a bunch of crazy stuff that like doubles that, that click through rate, then you might be doing things that are distracting people from reading the message, right? I'm not saying that's what Laura's doing because she's got two sales off of a small spend. So this is probably, this could potentially be either a winner or something worth developing, but that's like a point I want to do. I do want to get across to people is like, sometimes I see people just doing all this like fancy clip art and all this, like um, all this different stuff that just is going to get people to like click, or they might do something that like attracts a man to click. That's not actually, getting him to click because he wants to read the message or something like that, right? So, or, so um, in your testing, you should, the difference between a fascination click and a click that's based on the intent of they read that message and had an emotional reaction. Um, sorry to, to run you over there. I, I've seen um, I've seen two where people, the message will be too small. Yeah, they can't read it. People click yeah. just to read it right. and decide they're not interested and then move on. Right. Right. Um, but to answer, specifically answer her question, I mean, that's uh, that's great off of, you know, such a small spend. Um, and assuming that that click through rate is uh, because people love the message. That's awesome. Right. Uh, I keep spending more money on it for sure. You know, du double up your budget, uh, run an engagement ad to the same ad ID as your um, winning uh, potential winner here and buy some engagement to that post. That post, it'll help you out in the algorithm. It'll also help you get more social proof. And that can really help you in uh, sort of a shot in the arm. You know, if you're spending like 20 bucks at $66, so let's say you're spending $25 a day, just run like a $5 engagement ad to the same uh, ad creative. And make sure when you duplicate that to a higher budget, you're using the same post ID so that you're building up that social proof and that engagement in the algorithm too, to give that thing a better shot to see where it goes next. But I would say, yeah, I mean, uh, if you get 25, 50 sales and you're at a profit or a break even, you know, you're either onto a winner or um, a concept that's really close. Yeah. Cool, man. Thanks for that. Sure. So I think, look, I'm not seeing all the questions. Nobody else. Well, that was, that's all I saw. There was just Gary uh, uh, Salvador, who I believe we had on and Laura is showing up in like private chat within StreamYard for me. So um, I've got one more question here um, from Daniela that I think uh, it's a pretty simple one. I'll be able to answer, but after this, I think we we wrap up. She asked, what's a good course for a beginner? Look, my personal um, advice, and then, and then Mario, I'll kick this to you too. Um, you know, if you're a complete beginner, I think you could probably get almost everything you need for free. Um, at least in the Shine On group, you can go through all the coffee with Michaels. You can go through the shots of espresso, things like that. Now, the content's not like aggregated and, and kind of lined up for you in a step-by-step -step format, but you can get a lot of stuff there. If you want the content to be aggregated, that's where, you know, it's important to go to a course or coaching. Um, for courses, uh, you know, I plug Shine On 100K for, for a course. It's kind of where step-by-step, -step, there's a lot of stuff that kind of, it just, 
gives you the fundamentals, right? In a small, easy to consume uh, kind of package. You can get that at shineon100k.com. Uh, and then, you know, Anna's got a course. Mario's got a free course. Mario, do you want to plug? Uh, your um, course? My free course right now, I'm going to have a lot more time to put stuff into it, um, you know, after the cutoff <laughs> and I have plans to. Yeah, I, I made, you know, like a couple dozen videos on just what I felt like talking about at the time. And so there's some really valuable stuff in there, but it's certainly not in order of A to Z whatsoever. But feel free to, to join it, of course. It's um, uh, if you go into Facebook and you search print on demand profits post iOS, and then you just ask to join that group, then my uh, my staff will uh, set you up some logins. Okay, so there's some free stuff in there. Um, as far as uh, courses, if you are going to do uh, Etsy selling, um, Anna's is very A-, A to Z, and we're seeing results with that 100%. Where I was going next. Um, when it comes to Facebook, uh, uh, hey, yeah, Facebook Anna, just changes things so so often that I, I, I will never sell a paid course for Facebook because it's just like, Sec- I have like 500 videos in my Dropbox. I'd love to put them into a course, but every one of them has got like one little thing that's different now. And it's just, I'm not going to do it. I can't. Well, I will tell you, I've done two paid courses now, and I am in very similar boat as you, that uh, coaching is really kind of the way to go to stay on the trend um, or on the on the cutting edge. Anna's course can be found, at, I believe it's at shineonstars.com, shineonstars.com. You can also go to her Facebook group, which is Shine On Selling Strategies, and uh, I'm sure she's got a link to her course uh, in there as well. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a few different courses that'll help you. I would, you know, I think Mario's saying the same thing. I would highly recommend though, if you've got the money, go for coaching. Yeah, I coaching mean, is just kind of the best way to stay. What we just oh. used to do like all these sales in the last month was not what I was doing three weeks ago. Like, it's yeah, just like you like I, it's it takes me tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars and unbelievable amounts of time and money testing, you know, millions in ad spend to like see what's working right now as it, as it does Kirsta and he passes that on. Um, you know, I always say his name differently. <laughs> as it does, uh, Krista and his, in shine on zone group. So it's just such a dynamic place. And there's so many answers you're going to need in real time when you're doing Facebook advertising, um, that, uh, yeah, I highly recommend, uh, you know, coaching for that. But Anna was with, with Etsy, um, you know, she goes live in there and, and it is, does have a coaching element as well. And I, I feel, but I'm not an expert at Etsy. I feel there's less like drastic changes that happen in a split second. It's moving um, a lot slower. Yeah. Right. Right. So courses, other things you really need hands on. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. So, Hey, why don't you kind of one more time mm-hmm. tell, you know, thanks for coming on, dude. Appreciate the knowledge bombs you dropped. Where can people, find you. So if they want to, if they're interested in the coaching, obviously I can send you a direct message. Where else can they find you? Okay. So uh, if you're interested in coaching, just, you know, add me as a friend on Facebook and send me a message and we'll see if it's fit for you. Um, other than that, you can come into my kind of new free group, which is print on demand profits post iOS. And there's a free course that goes along with that. So that's a good place to get started as well. Um, there's some cool videos in there, uh, but I, I'm going to put a bunch more once I have a little free time after the uh, cutoff too. So, all right. Very cool. Thanks for coming on Uh, for everybody else. Until we see you next time, if you want to start selling with shine on, go to shine on.com. You can get started in like 60 seconds. If you're on YouTube and you want to join our Facebook group, go to bit.ly forward slash go shine on bit.ly forward slash go shine on and join the Facebook group. Highly recommend it. It's the most engaged e-commerce group on the planet. We put so much content and value in here. It's kind of ridiculous, honestly. Uh, if you're in Facebook and you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, what's the matter with you? You need to go do that. Uh, you can go to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash shine on POD, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash shine on POD. You can also probably just search shine on in YouTube and you'll be able to find us. Seriously, if you're not subscribed yet, uh, what are you even doing here? Um, you're crazy. So go sign up for, uh, go subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then finally, we have an Instagram too, where we're putting new content on that. We're getting fresh content. You're getting pictures and videos of uh, kind of our live events that we do for employees. It's kind of a backstage pass into what we've got going on here. So go check that out at uh, uh, at Shine On on Instagram. So with that, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you Mario. Really appreciate you coming on. My we'll pleasure. catch you guys next time. Peace everybody. Take care.
Hey, hey, Michael here again. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you like the content, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And there's one more thing I want you to do. Check out the links in the description below. I want you to look at the link to shineon.com where you can sign up and become a seller with us today. It literally takes 60 seconds and it could change your life. Secondly, I want you to go to our Facebook group. It's the most engaged e-commerce group on the planet. We're constantly sharing important tips, tricks, and things like that that can help you on your seller journey and level up your e-commerce game. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope you have a great one. Take care.